Hey guys, you're welcome to another episode of Founders Connect. Here we have conversations with leading African tech entrepreneurs. And we've had interesting conversations so far. We've talked to Ezra of Paystack, um, Yamo of Invest Bamboo, we've spoken to B Musti of Koda Bank, and many other ones. Now, we have one of my favorite brands, right? I am very, very intrigued by this brand and the founder, and I'm super stoked to be having this conversation today. So my guest for today is Fedro Hanu of Patricia.com. That's an amazing name, by the way. Hi, Fedro. Hi. Which one do you prefer, Fedro or Hanu? Hanu, Hanu. Hanu. Yeah. Okay, so hi, Hanu. Nice, nice to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for honoring my invitation. A pleasure. Uh, Alright guys, so stay and watch the video. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm PC Timmy, a change maker, professional and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing businesses. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful. So, uh, Hanu. Uh, tell me about you. So if you're going to talk about your background story, mm -hmm. what is that background story? Where did you come from? I say where did you come from, I say where you came from, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, uh, well, for starters, I don't talk about this much, my background and all of that, but yeah, we're here, so might as well. Yes, please. Okay, so um, I was born in Delta State, Worry. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and um, I grew up in Worry. I grew up in Lagos, I grew up in Port Harcourt, kind of like a little bit all over the place and um, I went to the University of Port Harcourt. Worst time of my life, <laughs> <laughs> literally. Right. But equally, I, I'd say it's God's plan because it kind of like, you know, um, turned me to the man I am today, yes. you know. So yeah, I grew up in Port Harcourt. Um, I studied mathematics and statistics. Yeah, funny story how that even happened because you know, so growing up, everybody wanted to be a doctor and an engineer, something fancy, of really. Of course. <laughs> you know, and uh, for me, I wanted to be an engineer, not because I knew what it meant, but, but because, because the title. exactly, you know, they, they work offshore, you come back home, you bring lots of provisions, you see lots <laughs> of stuff, and it just looks all fancy and oh, yeah, money. Exactly, you know, so I tried to get into engineering. So I tried in Port Harcourt first of all, because I wasn't popular at the time. Uh, and I got mathematics. Hmm. I was like, okay, let me try again. I tried in Bayelsa. I got mathematics. I said, okay, let me try again. I came to, to Lagos and I um, went on. I, 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 I got a posture me. And I scored 80, 80 points above the cutoff. And I still got mathematics ah, again. Ghost plan now. <laughs> no, no, no. At this plan, I just knew, okay, 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 okay. Don't fight it, my G. Don't fight it anymore, bro. Mathematics it is, you know, and I went to, to University of Port Harcourt, studied mathematics, and um, so I think that was the that was the start of everything for me because I had always had uh, an entrepreneurial bone in me, mm. really, from um, when I was eight years old. Um, I can remember clearly. So my mom was my first unofficial investor, right? So she, she, she Patricia. <laughs> uh, well, that's another story. Okay, we're coming there. I have. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. So um, I. I was in maybe primary two, primary three, and it was in the house sports. Mm. And I realized that there were so many kids coming from different schools to come and uh, you know come to a seminary where we all practice together. And there was no store in code that sells fancy sweets. Fancy sweets. Yes, it was just regular Tom Tom or just regular sweets that we we see everywhere. And just in front of me where I lived, there was a big church, and there was this fancy store there. And I was like, what if I bought sweets from this store and, and sold there. it in school? You know, like, it, it kind of made sense to me, you know. So I went to my mom and I was like, mom, what's up? I need 400 naira. I need to run this thing. She said, no, she can't give me the money. I'm like, okay, no, I'll now. We'll run it. <laughs> so that day, I knew where the stash is in the house. <laughs> I know where it is, really. And uh, she had like mints that day, so I took 400 mints, 200, 200, two notes, mints. <laughs> so I went to the lady and I said, look, I'll buy sweets from you, but this, this, this notes that I'm giving to you, keep, keep it for it. me. I'll come back and I'll get it back from you the next day. She was like, okay, come. I, I got the sweets, I went to school. I flipped the sweets of 400 to 15. Uh -uh. Yeah, I came back home. I gave the woman the money. I took the extra profits, bought some sweets of 400 naira still. Give my mom the extra balance to keep for me that this is what happened though, so don't, we are, we are even right. now. <laughs> Your we money are, is safe. We are even now. And I did that for about a month, you know, I, I think I made over, what, 70k back then. I think that was like 2000 and, 
nine or eight, I can't remember ish, you know. So from that point on, my mom became a sole investor. Mm. When any idea I had, she was easily funding me and all of that. And I think that was how it started for me. I went to the University of Port Harcourt. Um, so I went through basic. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like a uh, That's like P degree. Yeah, perfect. Like P degree. And, um, you know, trying to get into the university, it was a big deal because nobody wants to stay at home and do what, you know, really. So it was, it was a big deal trying to study, looking for opportunities still around the university. So I found one. Um, so back then, it was, there was a hype around bikes in school. Mm. So we, we had students not wanting to enter the tricycles because obviously it was not cool. You know, you don't want to go squeezing a small tricycle. So everybody was tilting towards bikes and there were no bikes in the school. Sweet. Still, you know, and I was like, <laughs> I can see where the story is yeah, going. Like, what if I, you know, so this time around, I need like 840K. There was no way in hell I was <laughs> so giving me that money. That. No, there was no way in hell she was giving me that money. So what I did was, um, I got my house rent, right? And I used my house friend to buy the bike, and I stayed with a friend for a whole year. It was it was a how profitable was that business? It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem was I the, the guy I got to run the bike uh, did me dirty, really. You know. What's that called? West never swear. It was crazy. So for me, it was just all about that. You know, before I finished university for Harcourt, that was like four years. I had gone through thirteen businesses. Uh, and all of them literally failed, literally, <laughs> at, at different points. Like, I got into so much trouble in school, so much. They knew me in the area, like, I was the guy that was always having failed businesses. So whenever there was trouble, my room number was, so they, they didn't even know my name, but they knew me by my room number, which was room 19. So I, I had a bike, I had an Indomie Sports Meshai, I had a popcorn stand. I went to a bar to buy a car, 130,000 naira for a car. The car never made it to Port Harcourt. <laughs> It was crazy. It was a it was a roller coaster. So entrepreneurship journey. has always been in your blood. Yeah, really. Like if I wasn't get paid to do it, I would do it. Mm. Really. So it's, it's like music for me. You know, kind of like just keeps me going. You like music? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. How worried are you? How? How worried? You say you grew up in the, in worry, and I'm just curious. Like, oh, wow. how much worry is in your blood? I am as worried as you Speaks can imagine. For like me. my guy and folk. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm as worried as you can imagine. I mean, really. what tribe are you? Oh, oh, okay, I'm so cold as I'm asking. Oh, okay. And I, I, I stayed in Wari a couple of times. So I went to Abraka. Oh, wow, okay. So, yeah, oh. and my brother went to University of Portal Court. Okay. Yeah, so. so I can relate, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying this so after now we can keep being friends. You understand? Okay. okay, so at what point did you get into cryptocurrency? After all this Mishai business, bike, pure water. So it was, in, it was in 2015, I think. Um, so I think. Um, my uncle sent me cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. Mm. Actually, he was in he was in London at the time, and he sent me Bitcoin, and I was like, okay, ask for money and sending me Bitcoin. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? You know, like my guy, you be the why me? What's up? What's going on? You know, but I looked everywhere. I needed the money. You know, I, I looked everywhere. I tried to sell this online. There was nowhere to sell it online. The, like literally in the whole of Africa. Right. There was nowhere to sell what it. What year online. was this? It was 2015. Okay. And I ended up on a P2P platform mm -hmm. and I got ripped off. And it hurt so bad. Because <laughs> you needed the money. That was, that was my last. And it, it took me months to even get this money off that guy. And, and now I'm here. Mm -hmm. And it hits me. So if I got ripped off, so it means some people somewhere would definitely be getting ripped up too. Mm. So they will need a, 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 a solid platform where they can do this, you know. And for me, I, what, so back then I had a journal where I write any idea I have, no matter how random, no matter how crazy, I just put it down there without a name, I just keep it there. Mm. So uh, this, one, this idea of me getting ripped off was idea number 37 mm. on that journal. So I just, you know, put it down there. So this is the story of how Patricia came about. Right. Okay. So I, I, I put the name down there and I was in my granddad's house at the time. My granddad and my mom, they have this love-hate relationship going on, right? They're like, they're like these siblings rivalry, you know? So my mom's name is Patience, but my granddad never calls her Patience. Yeah. I don't know why, I don't know how, but he never calls her Patience. So I was in my room upstairs and I could hear them fight downstairs. Heavy, heavy voice over the roof. And my, my, my mom was like, stop calling me Patricia. My name is Patience. 
And my granddad is like, I will not call you Patience, I will call you Patricia. And I was I'm like, okay. Patricia. That's seven. <laughs> Patricia. You know? That's so wild. And that was it, really. So I didn't know that Patricia was going to be the golden brother. You mm. know, for me, it was, okay, what next can I do? You know, 13 has failed. And, and I know that the only thing I have tried, I have tried to do over a thousand times and I have been, so, I, I have succeeded at knowing how to walk, mm. knowing how to talk. Nobody taught me how to do these things. I just, because I tried. So I always knew that as long as I keep trying, Michael Faraday, the Bob, a thousand times. So I knew like this basic. So even if I failed, it didn't, it didn't stop me from wanting to keep try. Going. Yeah, so that was it really. So how exactly did Patriot start? Did it now start with that P2P platform or gift card? Like, how did you turn that, oh, I was ripped off when I was trying to exchange Bitcoin from mm -hmm. Naira to what the business is right now? Okay, so I was, I just moved to Lagos to stay with my other brother. And um, for all my businesses in the past, I have saved up some money. I think I had like 800, 900K. This was in 20, 2017. And I was thinking, okay, this, 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 this is my home and abroad, right? <laughs> right now, this is my Who home life? and abroad, like 800K. I need to make this work. You know, I need to make this work. I've been thinking, what do I do? So I thought about it and I was like, okay. I, I looked at my journal and Patricia seemed like the, you know, Patricia just kept on calling me like, Try me out, try me out, try me out, try me out. And okay, let me let me try this time. But this time, I was going to try different. Mm. I wasn't going to do the same, um, follow the same route I used in the other 13 businesses. I was going to go different, you know. So what I did was, out of the 800k, I ran the boys' quarter, 500k. I was down to 300k, and I'm like, okay, come. I have the office space, an empty space. What do I do? I knew a guy. So I called the carpenter guy, picked up some tables, just made it cool, kind of cool, like 60K-ish. Okay, okay, calm. What next, what next, what next? Hmm, what is an office space without employees? <laughs> yes. So I, I spoke to my brother's manager. His name is Bimi Ereku. And um, he put out a tweet um, saying a tech firm from Lagos <laughs> <laughs> it's hiring. I was like, okay, yes, it's tech firm from Lagos is hiring, you know. And um, interview day, lo and behold, people showed up. I was like, wow. What's the job people role? There was no job role. Just a tech firm from Lagos is hiring. People literally showed up. I was so impressed. And we had interviews. I was wearing shorts. I was looking all scattered and all. Nobody even spoke to me. <laughs> so we were talking to Bimi. I'm like, okay, it's fine. Do your thing. So we, we finished the interview and um, two, people two people stood out, a guy and a girl, um, Chris and Beauty. So um, we sent them the offer letters by call, obviously. Not <laughs> letters, but, you know, and um, they resumed work. How much were you paying them? Because you still ha you had like, if I'm calculating correctly, like 200 and 40k. Yeah, so I paid them 30k, really. 30k, 30k, 25k. Yeah, and that was it. And um, so funny, funny stories, um, Chris, who, who was the first employee is still with me today and yeah. he's now the general manager of Patricia, CEO, doing the most and wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So we started working and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. What was the product that you guys were building at that time? So it was crypto, really. It was Bitcoin, buy and sell Bitcoin, buy and right. sell Bitcoin. And so we started up with Bitcoin, you know, but along the line, people started coming and saying, Oh, do you have gift cards? Mm. I'm like, Okay gift cards but that was not even it really because we were, we were there for like a month and nothing came out mm. like nothing no no transaction no numbers no nothing and i was like what is going on you know what do we do here every day chris is calling me asking me ah, what's up nothing like you know he just comes to work every day and nothing, nothing really and i was down like the the 240k i, I paid first month salary uh, okay something has to change really so at the time, um, social media was not a thing then really, it was, yeah. it was still coming up. And um, Mr. Jolof was trending in 2017. So I reached out to him and I was like, yo, gee, um, this is what I do. Can you help me make an ad? You know, and he said, okay, fine, he'll, he'll make the ad for me. And I paid him 70K. I was down to like 
40 something k at that time so that was the move <laughs> if that did not work, work if that did not work is to try again later <laughs> <laughs> and mr jollof um, made the ad and that was a tipping point mm. really he made the ad for patricia very casual like when i saw the hat the ad i hated it first because <laughs> I, I felt like no energy was put into it it was just the most casual thing so i didn't expect anything to come out of it you know but when he put out the ad it was amazing we had we had over 40 50 people reaching out to us to ask questions that was already a win for me even even mm. they, they did not convert what just for the fact interest. that we had something you know yeah and at the end of at the end of that week we had made um i think a hundred and eighty thousand mm. since i was born i had never made that kind of money in my life mm. really so at that point and then like, patricia uh, i don't uh, this is it this, no this is it. it's like i took all the money one into one eighty thousand i gave it to him again and right. that was how we were just right. recycling recycling and recycling before you know it uh it was christmas this was the, I think this was really the defining moment for me in, in Patricia and in everything that built up on, up to this point really because at the time it was Christmas and everybody needed to go home you know people wanted to go home to their families Beauty and Chris, Chris you know so they left and it was just me handling all the work that we three of us used to handle before now and um, so yeah there was no Christmas for me long story short there was no Christmas, there was no New Year. I was just coming to the office every day, working. And I did that for about two months because it took a while before Chris came back. Britain never came back. Oh. But Chris came back after two months. And before you knew what was happening, Chris came, right? Looked at, looked at the book, looked at what I've done for the past couple of weeks. And I had made about 3.6 million in two months. I did not even know I had made that kind of money. Mm. Seeing the amount of money I had made, wow, wow, wow. It was, it was a wow <laughs> Even now, moment. you're like... It, was a, it yeah. was a wow moment, and I was like, okay, so this was worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. The sacrifice for the 60 days plus was worth it. And for me, it's all about doing the most, you know? That's the culture of Patricia, doing the most. We do the most, you know? We are do, we are think, and we are spend everybody. And um, I took all the money we had made, 3.6 million, and I rented a five-bedroom duplex. Yes. Doing the most. <laughs> At that point, everybody thought I was crazy, crazy inclusive. They all thought, okay, no, this one has lost it, you know, because we had we were in it, we were in the boys' quarter, and we were just two. Mm -hmm. And now we're in a five-bedroom duplex. How now? You know, like mm -hmm. you didn't want me, <laughs> you know. But the funny thing about the vision is. Um, nobody needs to understand it, mm. you know, nobody needs to, nobody needs to understand, nobody, you, you have to be a little bit crazy to succeed, you know, and uh, so I think what really helped me understand life so, so well was I read a lot of books when I was in university, so I, I basically stopped schooling in 300 level, not because I was failing, but because I knew it wasn't for me, mm. so I, I, I started self-training myself, read, I read over a hundred books from, 300 level to 500 level mm. and we were just reading and reading and reading and you know trying my businesses failing and just just doing my thing really so i picked up a lot of things along the line so when i got this five bedroom duplex um at the time we were now four in the boys quarter right so it was becoming too small mm. for us so you now just said yeah. let's move let's pot over I have the videos and i'll keep those videos because they're like they are, they are they're like the so whenever things get tough now I just go back to those videos and I'm like, no, 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 you can, you can. You. So it was really wonderful. So we moved to the, to the, to the boys' quarter. I called family over. And it was so wow, and I was like, yeah. In, in my mind, I'm like, ah, ah, see, not anybody wants to tell me oh, it's done. This is done. This was where the next huddle started, really. Mm. So we're now four people in this BQ. So, so many ideas started coming in. Why don't you rent it, rent it out for as co-working spaces? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I said no to all these ideas. Yeah. And everybody felt like this guy is too difficult. This guy is too stubborn. He always wanted to turn his way. But that's not the case because I knew what I was going to do. I wanted to fill up this building with patricians, not because I want to, but because there is a need to, yeah. you know. And fast forward eight months down the line, 
that building that was with um, just four persons had 80 plus people. And this 18. was 2018? It was 2018, yes. So 2018, we had 80 plus people in the building. And by this time, how much, like, what's the volume you guys were doing now? Because when you did the duplex, you guys had made like 3.6. Yeah. So for you to scale up to like 80 people, so I assume that... that point, I didn't even know, right? Really, I... I was just, it was just vibes. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know I needed to hire for this road. Like, I didn't even know what the roles were called, like a HR mm, role. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what HR meant. Mm. I just knew that I needed somebody to help me in hiring. Mm. So funny story is, when we wanted to hire at that time, right, people came in for, for the jobs. But once they come into the building, they see me with shorts, slippers, dreads. They just go to turn back. Oh. Immediately, in an uncompleted building, <laughs> they just turn back. <laughs> <laughs> something is not right. <laughs> like, no questions asked. I was like, okay, something is going on. So I sent Chris, you go downstairs. They see Chris. They want to run, but Chris is always sharp. You know, he's with his chair tucked in, looking sharp, just like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so they stayed, you know. But even with Chris, I knew that... It was not, yeah. it was not, it's not his forte. So, I'm big on connection, right? Like mm. I'm big on vibes, I'm big on energy. Mm. Like, I, I think I literally beat Patricia and up to this point based off of energy, mm. you know? And um, so I went to the bank one day and I wanted to um, open a bank account for Patricia. So I, I met a lady at the front desk and we, we just started talking casually, you know? And I, I told her that, um, I love this UBA bank, mm -hmm. right? I love how big the bank is. And I wish that someday my office would be as big as this bank. Mm. You know, she, she smiled and she looked at me and she told me that your office will be bigger than this bank. And it was not what she said, but it was how she said, she said it. it. It's kind of like when your mom tells you, oh, when you're back from school, there's food in the, in the kitchen. Mm. You know there's food in the kitchen. Yeah, no questions. Yes, no questions asked. And that was the kind of energy I picked up from the conversation. Mm. So I, I, I got to the bank around 10-ish. I left the bank by 6 p.m. We, we talked literally from 10 till 6 p.m. The manager had to literally chase me out of the bank. It's like, why are you with this guy? You've been talking to this guy for over seven hours. Customers are waiting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had to leave. But before I left, I told her that, look, you're going to come work for Patricia. She was like, please. Come over here. You know. And fast forward to like two, three months, we're now in this, in this, in this new, in this new uh, duplex, and I called her up and come and see what we're doing. You know, she came in, had a conversation, and the next day she quit her job, yeah. and she came to Patricia. I think it was any one twenty, wherever she was working at the UBA bank, and I was paying her like 60, 70 k, because that was what we could afford mm. at the time, and that was it really. So she, 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 she just, just into the mission. exactly, and she just took the role of hiring, and mm. now she's with us still. Uh, chief of people and doing the most. <laughs> doing the most. So I'm very curious about how scrappy Patricia was versus the tech startup it is now. Yeah. So when it was just you, Chris and Beauty, or you and Chris yeah. at that time, I, do, do you do you code or did you have, was it tech enabled at all? Was it all manual? How did you become like the tech startup it is right it now? It was hundred percent manual. We were on WhatsApp. Really, mm. Patricia was built off WhatsApp. Mm. WhatsApp became too small because you can't have like multiple people logging on WhatsApp at the same time for the customers. So we moved to Instagram, wrong move, messy. Mm. Messy, we had so much fraud complaints, people making scam pages, all of that. So everything changed when I met Benjamin, mm. my CTO. Right. Yeah. Well, so when was this? This was in 2018, I think. After you guys had moved to the place? Yeah. So when we moved to the duplex, I needed somebody to install a clocking in system for the staff because they were coming late and they were being so unruly. <laughs> so, um, so I always knew Benjamin, so he worked at Microsoft at the time mm. uh, in, in the United States. Uh, so he came to Nigeria for a holiday and um, I said, come to Patricia, you know, come see what we're doing. He came, we had a conversation. Um, I spoke to him about the issues I was having with the staff not clocking in and he said, oh, we can, we can install something that will help them, will help, will help us track when they come in. Mm. And he came and installed, he installed it in, into this, into the, in the office. And at that point, I knew that if this guy can do this, yeah, something else that he can there's something do. more he can do for us. Yeah. You know, and I just, uh, so I saw the vision, you know, he bought into the vision 
and he quit his job also at Microsoft. Came to work for Patricia for free for like six months. Fantastic guy, I tell you. The energy and, is real. <laughs> yeah, six months for free. We, we did some radical things, really. So one day, we're just chilling in my office, frustrated. We we're having so much customers and we could not manage it. WhatsApp wasn't scaling, Instagram wasn't scaling. Mm. We had given like three companies our website to build, but nobody could understand it because mm. it was a new technology. Mm. Nobody could even, like, nobody could build it, mm. you know? So Benjamin mentioned a hackathon. I had never heard that word in my life. Mm. I was like, what is this? That was on, on a Friday night. What is it? He explained it to me. I'm like, okay. This makes sense, mm -hmm. okay? Call Chris, call Chica. What's up? Hackathon. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew what it was. Best believe, right? By Monday morning, we had 12 developers in an apartment, in a boot camp, right? Coding for two weeks. And that was how we built the first version of March. Patricia. And the energy was a hundred, literally. We didn't even know nothing about product management. We just took a guy from, from operations, Kachi, and said, Kachi, come on. Oh yeah, stay with the engineers. Explain <laughs> what this, explain what Patricia is to them. He was our first unofficial product, product manager. manager. <laughs> it was just vibes, really. Two weeks later, we had an MVP. We launched. Customers came on it. We had 2,000 customers at once. I'm like, what? WhatsApp cannot take Ever. this. What? At that point, okay, those guys from Hackathon, hire four of them, beg them, cannot pay them, beg them, <laughs> get them in. And yeah, that was it. Today we have over 60 engineers in Patricia. How, the most... how, how many people do you hire as a whole? Like, what's the number of employees? So, Patricia you have? is really diverse. So, there are so many bits and parts of Patricia that Tell people are yet, to, are yet to know about, and it's really fantastic. So people think I wrote this crypto, mm -hmm. right? And I, I like to let them think that way, you know, <laughs> but we're, we're a powerhouse. Mm. I'm not saying it because I own it, but I'm saying it because it is what it is. Mm. So Patricia is Patricia is one of the companies under Patricia Universe. Okay. Yeah, so we built our own world, like Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, we're, we're a big fan of comic. Doing the most. <laughs> As always. <laughs> so we have, um, generally in Patricia, we're over 300 people around That's the world. Genuine. Yeah, we're in Nigeria, we're in Ghana, China, South Africa, Kenya, and the UK. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so this we have staff in all of these countries doing multiple things. We have Patricia, we have um, Hank. So Hank, Hank is the first idea I ever had mm. in my journal. Hank is number one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how I how I come up with ideas is I try to solve my problems mm. because I know for a fact I'm not alone in the world. You know. I'm wearing the I'm wearing the hoodie, you're wearing the shirt, right? I drink water, I breathe air, I drive, you know. We all do the same thing. So if I have a problem, like somebody somewhere else. would definitely have that same problem. And the problem with Hank is, or the, or the, or the idea behind Hank is, I'm the most clumsy person you'd ever see in the world. <laughs> I kid you not. I don't have an AT, I don't have an ATM card because I always lose it. Yeah. Growing up, if you give me a key. That is the end of that key's life cycle. You will <laughs> never find the key again. My dad and I, we always fight. Like, the number of beatings I've gotten from losing a key, I'm like, why can't I just flash this key? <laughs> like, why can't I just flash this key? And you just pick up you on it. You know, like, I can flash some, why can't I just flash this key? You know, and Hank, you know, my name is Hanu. So I just changed the U to K, I right. just Hank. So now you can Hank it. Mm. So Hank is our first physical product, right? Okay. Where, like uh, where you can literally attach Hank to your key, uh, Hank your to, your, wallet to key. your wallet, to your to your bags, to your car, to your boyfriend, oh. your girlfriend, <laughs> to your pets. Whatever you don't want to whatever lose. Whatever you don't want to lose, really. And you can literally just Hank it, and it works both ways. It works both ways. You, if 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 you you lose your device, your phone from from your Hank, you can find your phone. You can find your device. If you lose both of them, you can go on the, on, the, on the app and you can like see the last locations on GPS. You can drive to it like Uber. So there's so much technology going on around, around it. Um, Hank is going to launch um, next month, mm -hmm. like officially. That's in May. Yeah, in May. It's going to launch officially in May. It's been, it's been years in the making, really. I'm trying to find the best technology around it. Um, we have, uh, hmm, should I mention? 
Well, spin it, spin it, spin it. Patricia Universe is diverse. You know, we try to um, we try to minimize the risk mm. of any in one industry. Right. Yes, and we go to other industries that we know that um, have potential. So the, the questions I am a team asks is, what fantastic idea is nobody currently building? Mm. Right. And we go ahead and we build that something mm. alternative, something not. Um, regular something not just something different you know and that's how we that's how we kind of like build the companies around Patricia Universe right now we're about to we're, we're, by the end of the year we should be launching our incubator program mm -hmm. um, where we, we, where we plan to do two things we plan to um, build up developers because there is a very huge gap in the development community today yeah. where we have to, we have so little developers and so many companies so we have a goal of um, 2020, 2021, 2022 rather, to be able to churn out a thousand developers a year. Right, that's, that's a very ambitious goal. That, that is a, an ambitious goal. And um, that's what we tr we're trying to do. At the same time, we're trying to give founders and young people their first check. Mm. You know, because for me, nobody gave them their first check. You know, and um, I want to try to you know, make it easier for the next people coming, the next generation, you know, and even, even people older than me, and you know, just to make them understand that it's possible, mm -hmm. right? If I can do it, you can do it. You too. can do it too, and I'll also put my money where my mouth is, and I'll help you, and I'll help you get there. So yeah, that's what that's about. And there's also Glover. Yes, there's Glover. So with with CBN, <laughs> yes, with CBN, uh, we took a very huge hit. Uh, yes, a very huge hit. And um, the funny story is, this is one of those decisions where I I had been blind to, because mm -hmm. my team has always been telling me, you know, let's uh, let's decentralize our businesses. But I've always wanted to build a super app. Mm. I want to build a one app that can handle everything. Like my my vision is still my vision, though it's just delayed. Mm. My vision for, for Patricia is once you wake up in the morning, you can do everything you want to do for that day on the app. Mm. Everything like you need to do on your phone, like you can use Patricia and you know do all of these services. So um, we had to break down the businesses. So we have. Um, Glover. Glover now handles gift cards. Right. Yeah, so you want to buy gift cards, you want to sell gift cards, you want to create gift cards for your business. So you have a, uh, you are, you, you have a boutique, you want to give your customers gift cards, whether virtual or physical, Glover is your guy. And far more than that, the, the question comes from what fantastic idea is nobody building, right? So we also developed something really unique called Etam to Cash. Okay. Yeah. So growing up still, <laughs> my mom used to always send me a time when I was in school because banks were not the big, biggest thing in, in the heyday. So she sent me a time 5k, 3k. I go to sell it, and they, from for 5k, I get 2000. Mm -hmm. um, like it's a huge ripoff, mm -hmm. you know. So I thought about it what if there was a platform where I could just, from the comfort of my house, just you know, convert my airtime to money? Mm -hmm. And there was none. So we built it, literally. And um, that's also on Glover, and we have tons and tons of transactions and that students all around the country using that um, using that service around attempt to cash. So that's that's what it is. Just there are lots of more companies that Under I cannot universe. talk about now, <laughs> but you know, just give give it some time. So you, you mentioned the incubator program that you want yeah. to launch and how you want to give people their first check. Yeah. Have you raised any funds for Patricia? No, we haven't. Do we tend to? Well, hmm. So Patricia has been self-funded. You know, Patricia has been wonderful in so many ways where I did not need to raise any funds. As a matter of fact, we had too much money at some point, you know, because what you do, so much money than to grow. Mm. And that was what, what we did, you know. And um, this year, our plan was to conquer Africa, to usher Africa into the digital age. And it's kind of sad because, um, because of the economic climate of Nigeria, Africa generally, you know, we cannot scale in Nigeria. Uh, Coinbase just IPO'd at what, 99.6 billion. You know, that can be Patricia yeah. if, if, um, if Africa allowed us to be great, you know, because blockchain is one industry that is not bounded by geography. Yeah. You know, it's not bounded by, um, it's, 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 um, it's new, it's new, it's shiny, it's, 
it's not understood, you know, but it's something that Africa can win at, you know, because there is no global leader in court. Even America, they are not leading in the cryptocurrency, to, to be honest, right? Nigeria is number two. Right. So we can ev we can easily overtake them, mm. you know, and, uh, and Nigerians, um, we have found a way to make this work with little or no help, mm. you know. Um, even though I have competition, right, and they are supposed to be the enemy, <laughs> you know, but I'm proud of what we are all doing because this is something that I know we can win at. Something mm. that I know that if given enough time, enough support, enough resource, you know, regulation just is meant to support, not not, not, yeah. not strangle the oxygen from the from the entity, and that's that's where we are at now. So what do we do at this point? You know, so you so you see people in my space trying to leave the country, trying to go to other grounds where 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 where, where it's a pro crypto and you can flourish you can survive in america today you see the government supporting companies like tesla with almost half a billion without that money tesla that, that we know today would never have even existed yeah. you know but we don't get that level of support here instead all we get is basketball <laughs> So last year, you guys um, advertised on Big Brother Ninja. Yeah. And I assume that the reason why is because always overspend, always doing the most, doing right? the most. like you said. Yeah. Well, how, what was the effect of that much advertising on Patricia's growth? Well, I, I, I like how you said that much, because it was that much. It was, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Big Brother, I did not I know what we're getting ourselves into. You know, I knew it was a big platform, but I didn't know it was that much of a big platform. So. Mm. We got into Big Brother with the help of um, my CMO, right? A fantastic guy. God bless the day I hired that guy, really. So he came to me one day and he was like, boss, I think we should do Big Brother. I'm like, what? Big what? And when he gave me the bill, I was like, definitely not. <laughs> we are not doing that, you know? But then again, let's, let's take a risk. You know, you take a risk, you don't know what's gonna happen. So we took the risk and the first time we had um, Big Brother, I got a call from almost 200 people, literally. When I came out of my office, I could feel some energy in the building. Mm. Like I could feel some, like I could literally feel energy in the Patricia building. I went downstairs and everybody's phone was ringing. Not just my phone, everybody in the building, down to the cleaners, I kid you not, their phones were ringing. Is that, not, is that not the company you work for? Mm. That Friday. So Fridays are Fridays are, are game days in Patricia. We wear Patricia t-shirts, hoodies, whatever you have, wear it. Uh, we have games. That Friday, everybody in the company wore their shirts. Normally we have to remind <laughs> you to wear your shirts. But that Friday, everybody wore their shirts. I was like, okay. I checked with the data analyst, said, what's up? How are numbers doing? We had 13,000 sign-ups in 12 hours. I'm like, okay. At this point, whatever money you will need, let's do the most. <laughs> so we went back to Big Brother again, and we upped our category, literally. Mm. And it cost a lot of money, really. How much? Well, let's say <laughs> a lot of money for, for, for sake of this conversation. But it cost a whole lot of money. Considering where we were at the time, that has been like, that was like, times four all the money we had spent in advertising mm. in Patricia's history mm. put together. But it was a wonderful and fantastic move. Yeah. That's, that's, I, can, I can imagine. Are you guys going to do um, Big Brother again and again? Well, I guess you have to wait and find out. <laughs> awesome. So what would you say has been like the biggest challenge building Patricia to where it has been right now? Mm. The biggest challenge within Patricia. Hmm. Well, I, it's it's not one thing mm. really. It's not one thing. But if I was to say one thing, that is the challenge. It's regulation. Mm. Yes, because every other challenge we can handle. You mm. know, every other challenge is within our premise. It's within our reach. We can. We always find a way around things. You know, but regulation is something that, first of all, reduces the trust of the public. You know, so it's a uh, it's regulation, and if regulation can be handled, we will thrive so much. Like I knew where we were going this year; mm. it was almost already set in stone. Mm. You know, so February fifth was is is a dark day in the history of the company. 
you know, because okay. we literally, we, we got the memo, but we didn't fully understand the impact of the memo until, the, until that mm. Monday when all my accounts got blocked. All? Including personal accounts. Mm. Like today, I cannot open a bank account in Nigeria, and I am Nigerian. This is how bad it is, you know. And nobody seems to understand, like, I don't get it really because we didn't get any phone call, we didn't get any, there was no prior conversation around it, you know, because for me, I'm like, okay, I get it, you guys are doing your job, you're trying to protect the economy, you're trying to, you know, strengthen the narrow against the dollar, but there are a million and one other ways to do this. Look yeah. at, just look at America, my guys. They have, the last quarter, Coinbase recorded over 1.8 billion in revenue mm. my goodness my goodness <laughs> do you know how much money the government of america is making off that mm. same thing with robin hood same thing with kraken same thing with all the platforms in america there was an incredible hike and i kid you not january alone right january numbers that we had in patricia was the two quarter was like um so we have four quarters in a year yeah right two quarters in a year could not even match January's numbers. So we were in that trajectory also, you know, but they just, you know, <sighs> it's sad, <laughs> it's crazy. So with this regulation um, yeah. in the country, what, what yeah. are your plans for Patricia itself? So I know that there's the diversification, yeah. Glover, Hank, but with the crypto core business, yeah. what are your plans for expansion for growth and meet these regulation issues? Okay, well, for Patricia, um, what we're trying to do is simple. First off, um, we cannot not acknowledge the market in Nigeria. Mm. It is the second largest in the world. And I tell you for a fact, it is, a, it, it is the largest in the world. So in Nigeria, there's, there's no data, mm. right? The informal market has so much transaction that is not recorded. So who are we really playing, mm. you know? Like today, we are all, like all the companies you see in Nigeria, right? We are all struggling around 10 to 15% of the real market, mm. right? The real, the real transaction is in Benin <laughs> with those two guys that are neighbors. Mm. If you sum them up together, my goodness, it will be times four whatever America is, mm. I tell you, you know. But the problem now is there's nobody um, addressing those markets, right? And legally, you cannot mm. address those markets. And you are forced to go P2P, right? And I'm not a fan of P2P. Why? Because I got ripped off in P2P. <laughs> True. Yes. So it works. Like, it works. But I have ideologies around how a business should run. Mm. If it's not convenient, I don't want it. Mm. If it's not easy, I don't want it. If I can be ripped off, I don't want Definitely it. Definitely not. You know? So we have reinvented the wheel around P2P, right? But then again, it wouldn't scale as fast as it would have scaled yeah. if it was back then in January. Mm. So that's our platform for Nigerian market. We're still going to play in Nigerian space, but obviously P2P. Just fine, we're still in yes, the Yes, exactly. This. But for Patricia, generally, we're going around the world because what I realized, what I realized is same, same ideology, right? If Nigerians have this problem, right, of cryptocurrency, Ghanaians have this problem, mm. Right, people in in um, Estonia they have this problem. People in South Africa have this problem, and I travel a lot, so yeah. I always get the culture in every place I go. Mm. And everybody knows Bitcoin, but nobody understands Bitcoin. Mm. And that's where Patricia comes in. Bitcoin made easy. Mm. See his shirt. <laughs> Bitcoin made easy. That's what we are about, and um, it's something we do so well that even 60-year-old women use us mm. to send money to their kids in America, to receive money from their kids from America. So it's the same ideology, Bitcoin made easy. So what we've done is, in Nigeria now, is, or what we did rather, is we introduced the first Bitcoin debit card in Africa. Yeah. Yes, so that alone put us up there, mm -hmm. almost immediately, because now you, you don't need to um, sell your Bitcoin walk into the mall and you can literally spend your bitcoin and you can use that card anywhere in the world anywhere in the world walk into the mall you can spend your bitcoin go to the gas station you can 
you can buy fuel with your Bitcoin, you know, and we took it one step further. And we, um, so we literally merged the traditional banking infrastructure with the blocking technology. And um, so Patricia, we had a bridge yeah. basically because we understand that there'll be a long time before people would jump on the Bitcoin train fully. So how well to introduce them than to bring day to day activities. Yeah. So what we did is, um, Patricia, you can buy airtime with Bitcoin. You can pay bills with Bitcoin, DSTV, utility, electricity, anything, basically. whatever you can do with Bitcoin. We were the first to do that before the other boys in the streets <laughs> are yeah, paying yeah, us. You know, I know, I know. You can, you can keep, keep, keep doing what we do. It's, it's calm. <laughs> but yeah, so for us, that's that's what it is. You know, how can we make it easy? How can we make it? And even looking around the world, nobody is doing that today. Mm. Everybody is still based on this buy, sell, exchange, margin trading, staking, the whole complex things. But people don't even know the basics. Mm. We are about the basics. Amazing. And then you said something earlier that um, Patricia, the universe is going to play in different industries. Yeah. So aside crypto, fintech, um, yeah. the what would I, the fiscal infrastructure of tech like Hang, yeah. for instance, what other industries are you looking to play out in the future? Okay, so we're looking at playing in fashion. I'm a huge fan of fashion. I like to dress, I like to look good. Mm -hmm. I like to come into a place looking correct. Yes, so um, fashion, definitely fashion. And we have um, we have the largest shopping experience in Lagos today, right? When you say shopping experience, what do you mean? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a store. Okay. It's called Room 19. Yes, my room, Room 19. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so for, for me, it's, it's just vibes, really. We don't try to do too much, you know, Room 19 is. So funny thing is, I started this business alongside my roommates in Room 19. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's the real fashion head, you know. So yeah, we have Room 19. Room 19 is the, the largest shopping experience in Lagos, yeah. and we will be we will be the largest in Africa when we are done. Um, we have Room 19 that that's in the fashion industry. We're also looking at um, shelter because we need shelter. Mm -hmm. You know, I travel a lot, like I said earlier, and I see some amazing places that you can never find in Nigeria mm -hmm. or in Africa. You know, I've always been pro-Africa because I love Africa. I love Nigeria. I see so much potentials here, you know, but our people up there are not <laughs> giving us the right vibe, but still, you know, so yeah, um, technology, physical products, technology, find your stuff, fashion, um, shelter. Yeah, these are the industries we're playing in. What's your favorite? I know you like cars, so what's your favorite car? My favorite car is a car I'm driving right now. What's the car you're driving it's right a, now? It's a 2021 G-Wagon Mercedes. Interesting. What's your favorite color? Black. Okay. <laughs> um, favorite city in the world? You travel a lot, so what's your favorite city? Hmm, that's difficult. That's difficult because it seems like whenever I go to a place for the first time, it becomes my, your favorite. my favorite city. But tops, so tops would be Cape Town. Mm, Cape Town. So there's this, it's easy going, you know, it's, it's like, it's like just wake up in the morning, eat breakfast and stare at the sunset. <laughs> really. Soft life. That is the energy you get in that place. It is, everybody just walking their dogs, walking their, their kids. It's beautiful, mountains, clouds, scenery. It's just, it's a, if you want to hustle, don't go there, <laughs> really. <laughs> Because you just get lost in the in the beauty of the place. Okay. We'll keep down there what's your What's your typical day like as CEO of Patricia? Mm. Okay. Well, wake up in the morning. It's a new day. <laughs> Seven thirty. I talk to Alexa. Alexa, turn on the turn on. The, Alexa, good morning. Alexa drops me something hot for the day, something motivational to get me going. I get in the bathroom, get to work. Um, I have meetings, Monday meetings, um, with, the, with the entire universe, every Monday, mm -hmm. with the entire company, over 200 plus people join the meetings. Time zones, some people can join, but over 200 people join the meetings. We have, like, we go, we go through the week, uh, last week, talk about wins, lows, highs, you know, I drop some motivational stuff, address some issues, if there are any issues, then we move over to meetings. So, top of the time is usually meetings for me, because there's so many departments, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many things that need to be done. So, so yeah, I work till like 10-ish every day. Yeah, 10 p.m. every day. I go back home and 
restart again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. So, final question. Um, what would you say has been the two or three biggest lessons in your entrepreneurship journey so far? Something that it's not just like something that you learned, but you feel like other upcoming entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. students in Port Harcourt that are trying to do everything for their own rooms, something that you can probably tell them that, oh, I've learned this, maybe it was a failure, it was a success, and yeah. it's something that you can pick up and make your own journey easier. Yeah. Okay, well, I think there are a lot, really, but I think the first thing is, is um, we border around shame, mm. right, shame. So, you may seem unorthodox when I say shame, but it's a real thing, right? So, people would tear you down, mm. right, so much. People would look down on you, people would mock you, really, when you're trying to do the most. You know, people would make fun of you, people would say, you know, you would never get anywhere. I had family members who literally said to my face, you know, what are you doing, Mishai? You know, I used to, like, what are you doing? Like, please, you know, move away. You know, what are you doing? There was a time where I literally had to stop school and go and sell my popcorn myself. Mm. Because the lady I employed, right, sold popcorn, stole the money, went and went to the store next to me. <laughs> she used Directly to next to me. So you funded her business? Literally, I was a VC, <laughs> you know. And I had to sell the popcorn myself, you know. My friends will see me selling the popcorn. They will, see, they take, they will, take, they will take pictures of me and put it up in the group chat in school, you know. But this was what was feeding me. So I'm not going to play that game with you. You know, I know, no, no, I'm not going to play that game with you. You know, so first thing is shame. You know, you have to be, you have to be able to um, look and see past all the, all the negatives. You know, one of my favorite quotes is, a ship doesn't sink because of the water around it, but the world that gets into it. Yeah. You know, so you have to be strong mentally to be able to accommodate all these negatives and turn into negative energies because these same people who are mocking me now are the same people calling me for handouts. Yeah. Same people calling me to say, can you give me a job? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I do it regardless because no hard feelings, you helps me get here regardless. You know, so that's on one side. And on the other side is it is possible. Yeah. I know we hear this a lot, right? We hear the idea of it is possible a lot, but sometimes it doesn't... Does it mean it's sinking? Yes, it doesn't, it doesn't go home, you know, because you look at yourself now, you're like, how do I get from point A to point B? But it's the same thing, how do you get from the, the same way you wake up in the morning, the same way you go everywhere in life, really? And I am a true testament of that, you know, because Patricia, no funding, zero <laughs> funding, really. If I was to talk about my numbers now in Patricia, it is mind-boggling. People, people don't even understand, like the banks, right? They don't even understand how we're able to rake so much billions. It's, it's mind-boggling, you know. So for, so for me, it is, it is possible, mm. you know. So even the craziest idea is, is, is possible. You just have to, you know. You cannot connect the dots looking backwards, looking mm -hmm. forward rather. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. Yeah. So all the negatives add up to now right so whatever you're dreaming whatever your dream is no matter how crazy it is Bonaboy won a grammy <laughs> isn't it possible yeah really you know hanu is going to be the world richest man mm. it's possible you know so yeah it's possible amazing so i don't think there's anything else we should talk about in this video i think that it's still a lot well maybe we'll do like a sequel but it's it makes a lot of sense to just end on this note that it's possible regardless of what you're dreaming about whether it's a career path that you want to pursue or it's entrepreneurship and you want to build your own business it is possible right don't pay attention to people forget the shame forget negative energy just do the most and you Literally. never can tell where you would actually take you to so thank you so much guys for watching this video to the end i hope you had fun and enjoyed this conversation as much as i did because i really did and leave your comments below you can ask what's your handle on social media uh might blow your mind yeah <laughs> yes so you can you know send him a message at him tell us what you learned about the video at might blow your mind or at patricia.com or dot ng, dot, dot ng. Yeah. Um, but yeah just share the video let us know what you think in the comment section below subscribe to this channel before you leave here and see you next time peace out <laughs>